How much do you know about what's happening in your child's classroom? Districts are looking for ways to eliminate disruptive behavior that forces classroom evacuations. News 4 investigator Chris Nagus introduces us to a mom whose son is known to cause disruptions and discovers the solution for everyone might come from outside the school. I feel sad for those children and worry about them as, as individuals. Tracy Moore of St. Louis County was not surprised when News 4 showed pictures like these in September. Classrooms trashed from disruptive behavior. Well-behaved kids moved out for their own safety. He's like Moore's child did not cause this damage, but these images are a tough reminder of the past. What was it like for you as the mother of a child who was causing the classrooms to get cleared, getting that phone call that your child had torn up a classroom? One of the worst calls I've gotten. Um, you know, you, you don't want your child to be that upset at all, and you wonder what's going on in their little brain. After our original story, the feedback was overwhelming, Take and for parents like Moore, some of the comments were tough to read. Things like, someone isn't parenting, and parents aren't doing what they should at home. On social media, when you see some of the comments and people say, this is bad parenting, what's your reaction to that? I don't think I've ever met a bad parent, and I work with parents every single day. I think what we, we have parents that, um, and there are many, many, many good parents, and they try their best. Teachers told us many parents aren't aware of the struggles they face on a daily basis. Tearing things apart, walking on top of the desks and on the tables, and hitting kids, and I mean, all those kinds of things happened, like, way, way too regularly. Is this one of the reasons why you ultimately quit? Uh, it was a driving factor, yeah. Districts told us children are coping with more trauma. That's no surprise at Hopewell, a mental health resource center in St. Louis. Are we seeing more of these challenging behaviors today than we saw just a couple of years ago? I think so, particularly in our area, there's a lot of violence that's on the rise, right? We work in North City. And so a lot of our kids are experiencing trauma. But this isn't just an urban issue. Suburban districts battle it and want solutions. Lakeisha Davis says her organization can help identify the subtle triggers. If you see a kid that's becoming more fidgety, more agitated, um, if you see a kid that's starting to shift or clench their teeth or ball up their fist. If the signs are missed, behavior can be explosive, and that impacts all of the other kids that aren't tearing up a room. Talk about. In Hazelwood, one administrator told me why classrooms are clear. One of the strategies is to remove the audience so that you can de-escalate the child. What are your thoughts on classroom clears? Are those necessary? I think to help overall, we should look at other options. Davis understands the safety component, but also wants to make it clear teachers should not be forced to handle it on their own. Her organization places therapists inside schools, and she says more mental health resource centers are willing to do the same. I think you said something that might resonate with teachers. Mm -hmm. Teachers are not therapists. Correct. And are they being asked to be therapists? I think that can happen sometimes because they're being asked, educate these kids, maintain behaviors, and if they have an outburst, figure it out so that everyone can go on with their day. There's a lot of reasons why those things happen. For parents like Moore, additional yes. mental health resources would be a plus, along with more training in de-escalation techniques to prevent the destruction from getting out of hand, especially when her child was small. Would you have favored the teacher putting their hands on your child to restrain him, to stop him from doing that at a younger age? He was four years old. I think that probably anybody could have picked him up and mo removed him the situation. Yes. You would have been okay with that. Mm -hmm. But every situation is different. And for professionals like Davis, she wants districts to face reality. Her answer goes beyond conventional thinking, and she hopes local districts and the state will pay attention. I would love to see this grow to where there is a full-time embedded therapist in every school in the state of Missouri. In the state of Missouri, I would love to see that. So I reached out to the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Turns out the state is working on a brand new plan to get up to 30 trauma specialists placed in different geographic locations around the state. But exactly where and what their role will be in local schools is still being worked out. If you have a solution, you can find me on Twitter or my KMOV Facebook page. Chris Nagus, News 4 Investigates.